Hi everyone, this is Jenny Lyles. Welcome to Out of My Mind. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when your family is hotlined by Children's Services, Child Children's Division, DFS, whatever they call it in your state. And I want to emphasize from the very beginning that your role as a parent, even though I am focusing on your needs in this video, your role as a parent is going to be to focus on your child's needs and that will help you in a couple ways. First of all, it will make the whole thing feel a little less personal and it will also help you with children's division because when you put your child's needs first, that shows and that is important to their goals. Let's start first with what a hotline is. A hotline is a call to children's division that reports concerns that a child is being neglected, physically abused, sexually abused, or emotionally abused. The call can be made by anyone. This could be a friend, a former spouse, a teacher, a doctor, a therapist, anyone. It's usually made by somebody with genuine concerns about the child in question. Even if the initial call is made out of spite, for instance, an ex or somebody who is out to get you for some reason, it doesn't matter in terms of how children's division is going to handle that. Even if the call is made out of spite, children's division will investigate fully and make their own determination. I know this because when I was a young mother with my son, his father thought it was absolutely hilarious to call children's division on me every time I didn't give him exactly what he wanted in between visitations. So I got very familiar with this process and I am lucky because it was very clear that the calls were harassment and there were never any substantiated charges against me and therefore those calls were basically a scary nuisance for me, not a major concern in my life. This may not be the case for you and I hope that you will have a good outcome if it is not. A mandated reporter is anyone who because of their job or their role or their position is required to report child abuse. Mandated reporters are typically people like teachers, doctors, nurses, social workers, school counselors, religious leaders, coaches, other people who provide services to children. The mandated reporter must report even if they don't believe that anything bad happened, even if they like you and appreciate you and enjoy serving your family, even if they truly don't believe that anything bad happened. They are mandated to report because it is not their job to investigate. It is the job of children's division. Further, the mandated reporter is generally forbidden from telling you that they're going to be reporting you before they do. And there is a reason for this. As a mandated reporter, if I were to report you and you were to take that child and say flee to another county or another state to attempt to hide that child and potentially continue to abuse them, I could be arrested for obstruction of justice and I could face a felony charge and I could go to prison and or lose my professional license. So I am typically not going to warn people ahead of time. Mandated reported laws weren't put in place to, quote, interfere with children, interfere with parenting. They were put in place 
to protect children. The whole child services system is there to protect children. And that's really important to remember when you're feeling put upon. One thing to remember when you're feeling put upon is that sometimes the abuse that we might be causing for our children is something that we don't see as abuse because it was something that was normal when we were children. And so simply learning that some of the things that we went through as, as children weren't okay is going to possibly be part of your process. Now let's talk a little bit about neglect and what neglect is. Neglect is when a family fails to provide a child's basic physical needs. This includes food, clothing, medical care, shelter, and personal hygiene. It also includes when a family fails to provide a child with their basic emotional needs. These will include things such as attention, affection, and oversight. To some extent, this will also be part of emotional abuse, but things like oversight where your child is left without supervision for longer than is uh, developmentally appropriate for them, or your child is allowed to roam in the neighborhood when the neighborhood isn't particularly safe or after dark, these sorts of things would be considered neglect. A third form of neglect is if a family fails to secure dangerous items and substances to protect a child from coming into contact with them. This would include storing a gun in such a way that a child has access to it. It would include things like storing illegal drugs or even prescription drugs in such a way that a child is able to open the bottle or get into the stash. This also includes household tent chemicals such as bleach, ammonia, things like that. Now the physical abuse rules are slightly different state to state. So you're going to have to check what your state's rules are because they have probably changed in the last 10 to 15 years or so and they're probably stricter than you realize. In the state of Missouri, a physical abuse is anything you do to a child physically, including kicking them, hitting them with a closed fist, hitting them with an object, using anything other than an open palm, like my hand is right here, to spank them on their bottom when they have misbehaved. There are a few places here and there where even that is illegal, so be aware of that. Sexual abuse, most of us pretty much know what this one is. This is if you are exposing a child to pornography or to sexual acts before that child is old enough to understand those things. Um, that doesn't include your child accidentally walking in on you and your partner engaged in sex, but it would include it if your partner and you make no effort to have privacy when you are having sex with one another. Another thing would be to touch a child sexually. I generally tell children that this is touching them in their areas that a bathing suit would cover them. Or having that child touch you sexually, taking photos or videos of children with the intent to use them for adult sexual gratification or posing them into sexual poses. Emotional abuse is difficult for a lot of people to understand. They just don't get it. It's a pattern of failing to provide for a child's emotional needs for affection and attention. It can include things like verbal cruelty, it can be pervasive and everyday, whereas in most families where physical and sexual abuse occur, there are short or long periods of time where that child isn't being exposed to those things. It can include things like name calling, ridiculing, making fun of someone for something about them physically or emotionally or about their uh, personality 
jokes, and I call them so-called jokes, that mock a child for their physical or personality traits, or shaming in public or in private. A few people got in trouble on YouTube for cha shaming their children. Now, some of the consequences of abuse and neglect include, for the child, addiction, mental health issues including depression, anxiety, and PTSD, personality disorders. There's some evidence that in addition to having a genetic predisposition, personality disorders can develop in part because of childhood abuse. This especially includes things like borderline personality disorder and uh, antisocial personality disorder, also known as being a sociopath or a psychopath. Physical health issues can develop from somebody who has been abused throughout their childhood. And let me point out that this includes emotional abuse. Uh, fibromyalgia is one disease, as well as chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, it's basically a whole body inflammation that never goes away. You have a greater risk of becoming an abuser yourself if you were abused as a child. You have a lifelong issue with uh, relationships, including intimate relationships, relationships with your own children, difficulties with authority figures, things like that. And you have a much higher risk of attempting or completing suicide and committing self-harm over periods of your life. Eating disorders are all, also common. What happens when you are reported? When you are reported, investigators will show up at your home and at your child's school or daycare and other places where they may go, think places like Boys and Girls Club. This is typically, if they believe that the report is serious, going to happen within 24 to 48 hours of the hotline. Often a police officer will be present if there are any uh, indications that there are dangerous items or dogs in the home. Within a week or two, a determination will be made. There may be meetings within that week. There may be multiple contacts with a case manager. A court might already be involved. And within that week or two, that decision will go about like this. Sometimes it's as long as a month, I should add. Uh, it will either be unsubstantiated, which means that Children's Division did not find any evidence of abuse or neglect. It could trigger a family intervention where Children's Division sees problems. They're not quite sure if they rise to the level of abuse or neglect, but they're definitely a problem for the family and for the welfare of that child. And so they may ask the family to uh, complete some tasks in order to be released from oversight of Children's Division. And the third thing is if it's substantiated and if the abuse or neglect is substantiated, that means that the children's division has determined that the court, that the abuse or neglect did happen. A court has probably gotten involved and a decision has been made whether the court is going to allow your child to remain in your home, uh, usually with a children's division worker providing close supervision, or your child is going to be removed from your home. If your child is removed from your home, it is typically going to be moved to the home of a family member, a friend, or a foster care provider. There are a few exceptions where a child would go to a larger institution. Those are a special case and not the majority. You get your child back or children's division out of your life by putting your child first. That is first and foremost. Whatever happened here, whatever the accusation is, whatever really happened, your child's needs have to come first, especially under the close supervision of Children's Division. You're going to need to go to all the meetings and court dates that you are set up with 
and that means missing work that means possibly having to get daycare for any other children in the home that may mean giving up things that are important to you for a while that means paying for gas paying for bus tickets getting there all those important things make it happen you may have to take drug tests take all of the drug tests they require of you and pass them if you don't think you can pass them because you have your own issues with substance abuse go get help for those issues with substance abuse now and make sure you tell children's division this because they may have to arrange some of the other things they need you to do around your uh, attending rehab whether that's inpatient or outpatient you may need to make repairs or modifications to your house this could be as simple as cleaning up a mess tearing out a carpet that has been for instance uh, covered in pet feces and urine it may be you know having a bug spray company come and fix a bug problem you might have things like that you may have to attend parenting classes and when I say attend parenting classes I also want you to attend two parenting classes and I say this because so much child abuse and neglect is linked to how we were treated as a child and accepted as normal and a, a parenting class will help you break that cycle and help you realize that some of the things you experienced as a child were also not okay you may have to attend therapy you may have to attend re rehab if they tell you to do it you do it that's the bottom line if you are under supervised visitations with your child during this time you will have to demonstrate to the parenting aid that you have absorbed these lessons and have learned how to be a better parent in a way that makes your child safer safer if you were not actually the one accused of abuse if for example your partner or another family member was accused of the abuse and you have been told to make sure your children have no contact with that person or to end the relationship with that person I'm going to tell you right now you need to end that relationship I'm not even going to say don't keep the child around them I'm going to say make the decision that your child's safety is more important than that relationship with that person who abused or neglected them now some issues that will get in the way of getting children's division out of your life kind of go on the opposite side of what we just discussed some of the things that will cause you to have children's division stay in your life is if you don't communicate with them if you don't go to court dates or you don't communicate with the court and you don't communicate with children's division when you do these sorts of things you are likely to have them in your life longer or you are likely to lose your children altogether if you fail to follow court orders now courts try to be reasonable and family court in particular is very much aware that poverty is a major issue in the lives of many of the people they serve and therefore they're going to work with you on issues that are caused by poverty so don't be afraid to ask for assistance wherever you need it but you still have to follow the instructions even if they're difficult for you even if they're nearly impossible for you um, if you have ongoing drug or alcohol addiction that is going to get in the way of getting your children back or getting children's division out of your life if you fail to take parenting advice designed to eliminate abuse seriously if you think to yourself well you know I've always spanked spanking didn't seem to help them I'm going to continue spanking because I don't understand all this stuff that's going to get you in trouble because you'll just get called in ahead because you'll start with spanking and then you'll use a paddle because you were angry or you'll miss the butt and leave a bruise on the leg or something like that and here we are again uh, failure to end relationships with abusers again is a major reason the children's division stays in a family's life or continues to keep a child out of the family's life 
failure to put your child's needs first. And this is one people don't think about. Don't talk about this case with your family and your friends. And oh my gosh, do not talk about it on social media ever, 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 ever. I'm going to say that again. Do not talk about it on Facebook. Do not talk about it on Snapchat. Do not talk about it in Messenger. Do not talk about it even if you think you are totally private because it will get in the way. Children's Division has two goals. Their goals are to protect your children and to reunify as many families as possible. They also want to provide good alternatives to reunification if reunification is not possible. So while you're going through this, you're going to need to care for yourself too because like they tell you on an airplane, uh, you put your oxygen mask over your own face before you put it over your child's face because if you pass out, there is no one to help your child. So let's not pass out here, okay? Get help from a professional if you can. Many children's division courts will provide you with what you need to get hooked up with a therapist. I strongly suspect that you are going to want and need one. So be sure to do that. Uh, remember that the purpose of the investigation, even if that initial report was that jerk of an ex of yours be making your life hard, and they decided to substantiate it and you don't think it's true. The purpose of this is to protect your children. It is not to make your life a living hell. That may be a consequence, but that is not the purpose. Children's division is typically not spiteful. It is not going to be personal. Children's division is simply trying to do their mandate, which is to protect children. Forgive yourself for the mistakes you've made. If you're involved with Children's Division, you probably made some mistakes. Forgive yourself and spend some time learning how to do things better. Because if you learn how to do things better, this will be in your past and not in your future again. Take time for yourself every now and then. I know it's going to feel like an impossible task to do that. But go and get your nails done, or go and get your hair done, or go to a movie with a friend, or have a movie night at home. Something that helps you calm down. Now, if you're normal taking care of yourself and involves drug and alcohol, don't do that. Stick to doing things that don't involve drugs and alcohol. Now, I hope all this information and advice has helped you as you're going through this very difficult time in your life. I have been there. I know how difficult it is. I have helped families who have been there. I have seen families be successful when it didn't look like it was possible. And I have seen families that completely could have gotten their children back fail to get their children back. So if you want to improve your odds of things going the way you want them to go, take the advice in this video, put your child's needs first, and communicate with Children's Division and follow every instruction they give you, even if you don't know why they're giving it to you. I very much hope this helps, and I hope that this is a chapter of your life that ends in a positive way. If you like this video and it was helpful for, t for you, I have more parenting videos and more mental health videos at www.oomm.live. And I also have a Patreon at www.patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S where you can contribute to my work if you find it useful. And always, 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 I really appreciate if you share my work and like it and comment on it and subscribe to my YouTube channel, to my website, to my Patreon. Thank you very much and I hope that the next time you hear my voice it won't be under such circumstances that you are facing a major disruption to your family. Talk to you later. 
goodbye.